Well, good morning and welcome to our worship here at Northminster. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every day we continue our uh, daily prayer services at 10 o'clock on Facebook Live. Love to have you jump on that and join us in those, in those times. Also, if you can, don't forget the blessing box. We're committed to continuing mission, even during these times. The folks around our church still battle hunger. In fact, the blessing box is needed more, not less. So if you have the opportunity to bring some foodstuffs by and put them in the box, I welcome you to do that. If you need to come by and get some food from the blessing box, I welcome you to do that. One other note, we are going to continue to air these services even when we're able to meet back here in person. And because of that, to make the experience a little more pleasurable for our viewers, we're purchasing some new equipment that we will begin to have in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Let's bring our hearts now to worship God. In baptism, we bear witness to the reality that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. We spend the rest of our years trying to live that out, not trying to earn the favor of God, but living out the reality that Jesus is our King, that He is our Lord, and that He's our Savior. So as you hear the water poured out today, I want you to hear the claims of God on your life in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. We thank you, God, that in life and in death we belong to you. And to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, remind us, even as we are scattered in our various places, remind us that you are with us. We are not alone. We are never alone. That though we are distanced, we are one in Christ. We are one in the Spirit. So give to us ears to hear this morning. Open our eyes that we might see. Delight delight in our worship as we delight in you, we pray. Amen and amen. This morning's call to worship is based on Psalm 116, 
if you're feeling a little blue and depressed being um, involved with all your stay-at-home activities this week, this is a good passage to focus on. So let's go to worship our Lord. The Lord has heard our voices and the cries of our hearts. Lord, bring us peace and healing. Rejoice and call upon the name of the Lord. Praise be to you, O God, who has raised up our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us bring our praises and our songs to the Lord. May our hearts and our spirits rejoice in this day. Amen. It's a song that's based out of Lamentations chapter 3, and it's the reality of that truth that the loving kindness of God is new to us every single day. It's that reality that is with us as we draw close to confess our sins to God. So let us do that today with confidence and boldness as I lead us in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, Your ways are not our ways, and your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways and thoughts are far above ours. We confess that we have often forgot that in our modern world, power disguises itself as truth. Convenience masquerades as goodness. Selfish pleasure imitates love. We confess to you, God. We have been caught up in the web of the world's sin. It is is our sin. By the power of the Holy Spirit, save us from these deceptions. Free us for glad obedience that we may see the joy of Jesus' resurrection and receive the promise of everlasting life. Amen. Scripture assures us and reminds us that God is slow to anger, that He's full of compassion. He forgives all who humbly repent and trust in His Son as Savior and Lord. 
The gospel promise is the one encapsulated by Paul. There is therefore now, this moment, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. May Jesus Christ be praised. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows. reason we live and the reason we gather ourselves to worship our God and the beauty of His holiness. So let's go to prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to fill each one of us this day. Lord, as we look into Your holiness, as we open the pages of Scripture, it is our prayer that Your Spirit would fill each one of us you would open our eyes and our minds and allow us to hear 
your word for us this day. Send your word forth and use it to accomplish your purpose, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Our first reading is the gospel reading from Luke 24. So this is the this is the Sunday of the resurrection where we pick up this story in verse 13. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? And they stopped short. Sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened here the last few days. What things, Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet. He did powerful miracles. He was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priest and the other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death. And they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing. And they had seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the Scriptures, wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering His glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the Scriptures the things concerning Himself. By this time, They were nearing Emmaus in the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. At that moment he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. The two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road, and how they recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And then these words in 1 Peter chapter 1, as Peter reflects again on this event. Verse 17, remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites, He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of Him during your time here as temporary residents. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ 
the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose Him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, He's been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you've come to trust in God and you've placed your faith and hope in God because He raised Christ from the dead and gave Him great glory. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. For you've been born anew but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal, living Word of God. This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a blessing and a curse to modern medicine, isn't there? One of the blessings of modern medicine is is good eye care. We know a lot about that in our congregation. It's quite often that someone will say to me, I am getting cataract surgery, and and, uh, they, they have amazing vision on the back end of that. When our vision becomes compromised by age or disease, we we're able to make choices to remedy those problems. In my case, the doctor may prescribe a new prescription or contact lenses which correct the vision so we can see clearly. But inevitably, whenever I get a new prescription, it's always a period of adjustment. I'll come to a step and I'll have to be careful because after all, I have a new prescription. I remember as a child when I... When I first got glasses, that was not a happy day for Wally Johnson, I will promise you. In fact, I was so vain that I would take the glasses to school because mom would make me. I would put them in my pocket where they would stay the rest of the day. And I would sit in the classroom doing this so I could pull my eyes and see better. I thought that was a better choice than glasses. (laughs) When I first got my glasses... I realized that the grass actually had individual blades. When I first got glasses, I realized that trees actually had individual leaves. It wasn't just a blob of green that was up there. You see, good vision gives us perspective, and it enables us to function well. The Easter season is a time of our adjusting to a new vision. God has done this incredible work. The tomb has been empty. Death has been defeated. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed on Easter Sunday. Our hearts filled with joy as we sang hymns of new life. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering Son. A new vision had been given. A new way of living has been prescribed. But this is a lot like getting a new pair of glasses. We have to get used to that new vision, that new perception. You see, perspective is important. And perspective is more than just the right prescription. Perspective is a battle for our mind. The right perspective can bring joy or happiness. The wrong perspective can lead to disaster. What's our perspective while we are quarantined and and staying safe in our places? If If our perspective is on the tyranny of government, we will react in anger and fear and frustration. If our perspective is love for each other, our choices bring joy to our souls. The story is told about a little boy and a little girl, brother and sister. They went with their moms to the department store to do shopping, and mom needed to have a little extra time, so she took the kids to the soda fountain that was there on another level, bought them some ice cream, 
told them to stay right there. She'd go finish and come back and get them. But the kids, after they got their ice cream cones, they were pretty fascinated by the elevator. So they go over to the elevator and they start riding it up and down as kids are prone to do. And then the little boys, because he's more fascinated about the elevator, his ice cream cone starts to melt. You know how that is. And pretty soon it's not just down the cone, it's on your hands. And so he's trying to figure out how he can clean that up. And a, a lady in a, in a beautiful coat, fur coat, gets on the elevator right in front of him. And so little Billy decides, hey, And he begins to take and wipe his hands on that fur coat, trying to deal with his melting ice cream cone. And his sister said, you better be careful, Billy. You might get fur in your ice cream. (laughs) That illustrates perspective. What's a solution to one is a way to damage a nice expensive coat to another. It's all in perspective. And there's a battle for our minds. The world calls us to buy into their perspective, a perspective that tells us it's really all about us, a perspective that tries to convince us that we have a right to be happy and our happiness is the the end all and the do all and the be all of everything. The world gives us a perspective that we deserve to be served, that, that might is right that our cause is always just, that the permanent should be sacrificed on the altar of the immediate. But you see, Peter in 1 Peter is calling us to live out the story of Luke 24, reminding us that we're to be living from an Easter perspective, that we're to be heavenly minded, that we're to live upstream in a downstream world. He talks to us about being ransomed by the blood of Christ. Peter is giving to us a new way to understand those words. He maintains that Christ has ransomed us from our own futile ways, from our own sinful choices, and that because of this ransom, we now trust in God. We walk in truth. We love our neighbor It is because of the grace of God that Christians speak truth in a world that's consumed with lies. It's because of the grace of God and the resurrection of Christ that we are extravagantly generous in a world that is is composed of greed, that we are consumed with serving each other instead of being served. In the grace of God, we've been ransomed ransomed from ourselves, from our sinful desires, from our captivity to our own broken wills. We are now Easter people. And Easter people live with the perspective of the resurrection. Christ has conquered sin. Christ has conquered death. Easter people live with the perspective that the best thing is still in front of us. That's our perspective. And that vision challenges us to live boldly and daringly right now. Peter says it this way. You've been born anew. Not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring Word of God. You have a new perspective. A new way of living. And so he says, dare Dare to love one another deeply from the heart. The early church had to get used to the Easter lens. It would seem strange for them to live from the perspective of love in a world that was so used to living in alienation. They were so used to being separate and divided from each other. Sounds very contemporary, doesn't it? What the Easter community did was begin to communicate that in Christ all those walls were broken down and now they were loving each other deeply from the heart. And the world stood in awe as they watched a community of love live it out in real time. That's a challenge for the church in 2020. 
The story continues as Easter people put on those lenses and dare to live in the way of love in a world of alienation and hurt. And you and I are to be that same kind of people. We have seen what God has done in Christ. We no longer live in fear. Instead, with radical love, we go out with the perspective of love as we follow the way and the example of our risen Lord. We go forth in love making personal choices out of love, not fear. We're the people who dare to live the hope that other people believe can never be realized. You see, our Easter glasses give us the holy boldness to ask, what if? What if every child had a warm, safe place to sleep? What if there were not long lines queued up to get food because of jobs that have been lost? What if we all lived from a sense of abundance rather than scarcity? What if wars stopped and we truly understood what it was to be peacemakers. You see, resurrection is supposed to make a difference in our lives today and in the life of the church. Peter says, through Him, through Him you have come to trust in God who raised Him from the dead and gave Him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. May those be the glasses that we put on this week. May we be people of Easter whose vision has been forever corrected by what God has done in Jesus Christ our Lord to the glory of His name. Amen and amen. So I invite you join me in the affirmation of our faith and we will use the Apostles' Creed. And so I I ask you, wherever you are, Christian, what is it that you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is as Easter people that we bear the burdens of our brothers and sisters in Christ. So let us pray for one another. And I invite you at the end to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Lord God, we are thankful for the perspective that we gain in the resurrection of Christ. We get so wrapped up in stuff and things that we lose that perspective quite often. So keep our eyes fixed on the wonder and the glory of Christ that we might live transformative lives in this world. We pray for our loved ones and our friends who need their perspective refreshed and renewed this day. We lift up our medical workers and ask for their protection. Keep them safe. Help help us make decisions that make it easier for them. We need them. We pray for our loved ones with difficult medical situations and those with chronic situations. And we remember Colette and Matt. We lift up Mark and Robin, Susie and Ron. Lord, hear our prayers for Kristen Fox, for Karen, 
for Margaret Myers, Marnie Wasserman, and Dave, Jerry Miller. Lord, we pray for Robert Beavis and his family. We lift up those in our senior living facilities and Lord, we've been hearing reports of they have been ravaged with COVID. Lord, I pray that you would protect them, that you would watch over them, that you would strengthen them and keep them safe. Remind them and all those who are living alone that they are never alone. We lift up Bill and Jan Post. We're thankful for progress with Fran McGuire and glad she's back back home with Dick and we celebrate that. We pray for your church here and around the world. We pray for our sister congregations, the Presbyterian Church in Kirkuk and the Reformed Presbyterian Church in Hawaii Grande, Cuba. Give our leaders wisdom, Lord, to discern the right course of action and the courage to do it. All these things we ask in the name of our risen Lord, who taught us to pray using these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Your offerings are important to us, but I would remind you as I do every week that I'm talking about a whole lot more than money. The offerings of your prayers, the offerings of your words of encouragement, the offerings of connecting with each other while physically distancing, those things are important to us. So, Let us always return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth, knowing that the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all those who live in it. Thank you for your extravagant generosity. Listen now to our closing hymn, and let this be your prayer today. Christ be beside me. Christ be the vision in eyes that see me with that in mind, this benediction this day. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes. The love of God be reflected in your hearts. The wisdom of God be reflected in your minds. And the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. Alleluia. Amen.